Hi, welcome to my channel. I will tell you story. The film is inspired by the true story of Master Chief Petty Officer Carl Brashear, the first African-American master diver in the United States Navy. Flashback about 25 years before. A young African-American youngster called Carl Brashear, who is watching his father Mac work the plow on their farm. Carl wishes to leave school in order to help with work and thereby save the farm from financial catastrophe. Mac is adamant that his son not be like him and forced to work on a farm, although he allows Carl to assist. Time flies on and Carl, now an adult, is leaving town to join the Navy. As a souvenir, Mac gives his son a custom-built portable radio and instructs Carl to be the best, even if it means breaking the laws. Carl eventually finds himself working in the kitchen of the USS Hoist in the South Pacific. He and the other black officers make jokes about the so-called bright future the Navy promised them. Their superior informs them that black males in the United States Navy have just three career options. Chef, officer's valet, or get the F asterisk CK out of the Navy. Afterwards, Carl and his friends then walk up on deck to watch the white officers swim. The black crewmen have a specified day when they can swim. Carl, who is tired and sweaty, chooses to jump in the water. The white officers try to chase him, but Carl outswims them all. Carl's actions result in his imprisonment in the brig. The captain of the ship meets with Carl and, impressed by his speed, decides to transfer Carl to the search and rescue swimmers. A few days later, Carl is composing a letter to his parents when the ship is shaken by an apparent crash. Their mail chopper has gone down in the ocean by accident. Carl helps the others on deck raise a Navy diver from the seafloor carrying the injured pilot. Sunday is master chief for the diver. Because Sunday is now back on deck, regulations require him to undergo decompression. As the next diver is being lowered, a mishap with the winch cuts the diver's air hose. Chief Sunday prepares for a perilous bounce dive to save a fallen buddy. Lieutenant CMDR Hanks, one of the officers, orders Sunday not to go, but Sunday disobeys and leaps off the ship. Later in the hospital, we learn that Chief Sunday was able to save the other diver, but physicians discover that he has a major embolism in both lungs. Sunday is no longer able to dive due to this problem. When he learns of this, Sunday erupts, destroying equipment and assaulting members of staff. Carl is present at the disciplinary hearing, when Sunday is officially disqualified from further diving duty and assigned to a training role. Carl is impressed by Sunday's deeds and decides to become a Navy master diver. Carl is reporting for diving school two years later, the same diving school where Sunday is the trainer. He is permitted in after a tense argument with Chief Sunday. While most recruits are repulsed by the prospect of sharing a bunk with a black man, one Navy candidate, Snowhill, makes an attempt to befriend Carl. Carl is exposed to severe hazing that night and by Sunday. The following morning, Chief Sunday singles out Snowhill and dismisses him from the program for failing to perform an impossible assignment. Carl is now on his own. Despite the harsh treatment, Carl excels in his training, building machinery and adapting to the diving suit with far greater success than many of his peers. Carl, on the other hand, is falling behind in his academic requirements. Carl will be kicked out of the program if he fails again. Carl visits a library one weekend while on leave in the aim of finding a tutor. He meets Joe, a young woman who is studying medicine. Carl, she believes, will fail because he only has a seventh grade education. Carl spends the entire night reading and learning about the Navy program at the library. Carl will soon be back in class, awaiting the results of another test. Carl is overjoyed as the examinations are administered. He received a 76, keeping him in the program. The following day, a training exercise that involves raising a sunken ship to the surface and fixing its hold takes place. The ship accidentally changes its position, trapping one diver with the air hose as the other runs for his life. Carl offers to lower a new line for the diver who is trapped. Carl is successful in saving the boy's life. Unfortunately, because of the prejudiced atmosphere of the time, Carl is ignored while the diver who fled earlier is given a medal for his actions. On his way out of the school, the recruit thanks Carl in silence for saving him. In the evening, while he is in town, Carl runs across a young woman who identifies herself as Gwen Sunday, the chief's wife. Carl is brought into the same bar by Gwen where her husband and his other divers hang out.
Carl and Sunday confront one another. Carl asserts his superiority over Sunday. They compete to see who can hold their breath the longest while wearing pressurized diving helmets. If Sunday wins, Carl will depart town that evening. But, if Carl wins, Chief Sunday will have to re accept Snowhill into the diving program. Carl observes Joe watching the altercation with dismay as she leaves the establishment. Carl managed to win, yet his acts are once again disregarded. After a while, Carl followed Joe. Joe tells him that she won't be able to assist him any longer. But Carl proposes to Joe. Joe considers taking a cab away, but she decides to come back and accept. Chief Sunday have meeting with Captain, Pappy, the eccentric senior officer at the training school. Chief Sunday reports that Carl received a final test score of 94, which means that all he needs to do to graduate is complete his last training activity, a timed exercise. Pappy is not at all pleased, but Sunday is hesitant to agree. Sunday confronts Carl once more. Carl responds with an insult, and Sunday breaks the radio his father gave him. Sunday notices Carl's fury at this and the radio's ASNF inscription as well as the picture of Carl's father by his bed. Sunday asks what his father said to make him try so hard. He simply said, be the best. Sunday admit that he is. The following morning, Chief Sunday explains to the recruits the requirements of the last exercise. They must assemble a flange underwater, with the tools being provided once the parts have been found on the river bottom. There is no set time restriction. Carl enters the exercise with a belligerent attitude and, finally, he earns some respect from the other recruits. Carl is one of the first to find the parts he needs for his project, but when he asks for the tools, his colleagues cut a hole in the tool bag, sending the tools fall to the river bottom. Carl quickly looks for all the required parts. As time goes by, the assignment is slowly completed by the recruits. But Carl stays in the water until midnight. The other recruits have returned to watch Carl finish. Sunday is given the directive by Pappy to keep Carl in the water until he stops moving. But Sunday decides that enough time has already passed and orders that Carl be brought back up. The other recruits step up, but just as they start to bring in the lines, Carl's project flange emerges, completed. Carl Brashier has passed his final, spending 9 hours and 31 minutes in the cold water. The following day, Carl is he leaving next day, Snowhill runs in to speak to him. His return to the diving program has been requested. He also states that Sunday has been thrown out as trainer of the school. Carl also finds his father's radio, completely fixed and with, a son never forgets, freshly engraved on its side. Later at night, Carl and his wife are in a nightclub. Carl celebrates for his new job offer from Brooklyn Navy Yard. Joe admits that she is three months late, and Carl is suddenly ecstatic at the possibility of becoming a father. At a New Year's party, Lieutenant Hanks, the man who put an end to Sunday's diving career, runs across Sunday and his wife. Despite his best efforts to maintain politeness, Sunday ultimately attacks the lieutenant. Later, the focus returns to Chief Sunday as he watches a TV report the ongoing salvage operations. Earlier that day, an American B-52 aircraft had crashed in Spain. Charges are filed against Sunday for assaulting a superior officer and is demoted. Carl is one of many divers assigned with attempting to locate the missing bomb. Carl finds metal objects on the seafloor, but the only thing he finds is a Coke can. A Russian submarine is detected to be nearby. Carl spots the sub and tries to swim to safety, but the sub catches his airline and drags him down the seafloor. Carl is able to contact the surface and inform them that he is unhurt. Carl notices a massive metal object nearby. The sub's movement has caused the debris to move aside, essentially finding the nuke for them. Carl remains on deck and observes the bomb being loaded. The ropes holding the bomb snap to an error with the winch on deck. He pushes crew, but the wire snaps and caught his own leg. Next day, Joe is by Carl's side when he wakes up in a hospital. Joe explains to Carl that doctors believe he will be able to walk again. Carl is devastated to learn that his diving career has been ended by this injury. Meanwhile, Sunday is currently undergoing alcohol detox in a rehab facility. With the support of Gwen, Sunday gets back on his feet. He recognizes Carl from a story of a news about the accident. Carl is reading a news article about amputee pilots being allowed to return their duty. He speaks with his superiors, Captain Hanks. Carl wants to return to full diving duty. 
They believe it is impossible for Carl to return with his current condition. Carl expresses his wish to return after a prosthesis fitting and have the injured leg amputated. Carl's leg is eventually removed. He starts the difficult process of figuring out how to move. When Chief Sunday shows up, he asks if he can assist Carl. Sunday makes a deal with Captain Hanks and begin training him again. Sunday was given four weeks to finish training Carl. Captain Hanks agrees, on the condition that Sunday retire immediately if Carl fails to return to duty. A month later, Carl shows up in front of the naval personnel. Captain Hanks explains, Carl must be able to complete 12 steps without assistance. Carl stands up on his feet in the new suit and then proceeds forward for a short distance. He starts shouting orders at Carl. Carl struggles, but he is determined moving forward until he reaches the 12th step. Captain Hanks declares that Carl Brashear will be reinstated to full diving duty by the Navy. Sunday leaves the courtroom after Carl and Sunday give each other a salute. Thank you for watching. Click the subscribe button and notification bell to watch more videos like this.